This is the J.R. Hendrix text, and gentlemen. The podcast that deals with the early life of J.R. Hendrix. Done the best player in a narrated format. Welcome to the podcast where we try to slag away a family feud. <laughs> Like Texas, that's what this episode is called, is a family feud, because in a way, that's where it kind of starts. So, if you will, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, don't know what's going on with this phone right now. I got some kind of alert on here. Or whatever it is, it can wait. In fact, I'll just put the dang thing on do not disturb. So that we can go ahead and podcast. All right, now. We ended on August th- 31st on the last year. So now we're going to go to September 1st. 9.30 a.m. with Jim, Betsy, and the rest of the family going out to have breakfast at a pub called Trojan. J.R. and Kristen go to church. Okay, so it's 1 p.m. After lunch, the family makes it to Lake Allen Henry for a swim. Kristen looks out over the water as she and J.R. talk in the shallow end. I want to go to the studio early Tuesday morning to lay down some fat tracks, Kristen said. And Kyle says, Kristen, we like you so much. We figured maybe we would take you to Joyland with us, with with Jr. Kyle said. Now, Joyland is actually a real amusement park in Lubbock, Texas. I'm not sure it's still open. It should be. And, um, Sure, I would love to go. Wouldn't you, Jr.? Kristen said. Okay, so it's 3 p.m. The family arrives at Joyland Park. The first place they go to, Jr. and Kristen, is the Tilt-A-Whirl. And Kristen got very sick. Jr. picked up his cell phone and called the family. Mama, Kyle, Carmen is taking uh, Kristen and I up. She's pretty sick, Jared said. And Kristen's like, I'm so sorry, Kyle. I swear to you, I'm so sorry. Kristen said, crying. Please, baby, don't cry. Kyle said uh, firmly. Junior, we'll meet you back at at the at the house. Okay, so it's seven p.m. Jaren uh, had texted Kristen back to her condo, and he picks up the the phone and makes a few Amistar calls until the family got back. Okay, so it's nine p.m. Back at JR's condo, and this is where Kyle just really gets <coughs> downright ugly. He starts picking with JR. 
can you damn it to hell? Kyle exploded. Get off my back. The poor girl was sick, Jerry said. I don't like her attitude. I'm sorry, Junior, but Kyle has a point, Bessie said. As Jim shatters a bottle of beer outside. Shut up, all y'all! I come this far to see my oldest boy. And I'll be damned if you guys pull any tricks that cause me to lose him. Jim uh, said to me. You know, Kyle, maybe it is a mistake. Let's go back to the hotel, Madison. I didn't get here what I came here for, Kyle demanded. Damn it now. We've been at all this all day. The kids are tired. James Kyle won't stop screaming and crying. All right, come on, all y'all. Go back to the hotel. I'll talk to my boy alone, Jim said. Okay. <coughs> Good grief. I'm going to give Kyle the bill. Okay, because he deserves that. Pretending to be all nicey-nicey and then Things don't go his way, he flips his lid, so Kyle gets the bill. They each walk outside, and Jim walks over to his, his son, giving him a hug. I'm sorry, but one time I come back here to Texas to see you. Your mama has to cater to Kyle. I ain't going to have that. You're my oldest. You're my flesh and blood. Thank you, Daddy, Jerry said. Here's hoping Kristen gets better to see us tomorrow, Jim said. <coughs> Taking Jared's hand and giving him a handshake. No, it gives him a turquoise emerald stone. Okay, so now I have to find September 2nd. Here we go. I'm positive I'm having allergy problems. Okay. <clears throat> now, it's, it's Labor Day, 96. 8 a.m. Eastern, and Central rather. The family, along with J.R. and Kristen, had breakfast together at IHOP. The mood is light and happy for the most part. J.R.'s nephew, Andrew, had taken a liking to Kristen. 9 a.m. Back at the condo, the women are doing some cleaning as Kyle takes the kids swimming in the condo pool. So Jim takes JR aside to the uh, office bedroom. 
I would never have thought you would want the condo, Jim said. That being said, you're saying that you deserve it. I told Betsy not to give it to Kyle. He's just a damn rolling stone, just like his father. <clears throat> I'll make you proud, Daddy. You're a fine young man already. You got yourself a woman. And you're ready to settle down. Just what I want, uh... I want, Jim said. 11 a.m. Betsy and Madison got lunch from Jumbo Joe's uh, Burgers for everybody. And everybody seems to be having a good time. Kristen, who has not gravitated toward kids, played with Andrew. However, little George was not too kindly disposed to her. George, show respect for your uncle's woman, Kyle said. How about you hold your tongue? Jim fumed at Kyle. Look, can we, can we peel back at the testosterone? Betsy said. We have to be at the airport by 3.30. 1 p.m. At the condo, Kristen and Betsy Bicker. I want that AC on 68th. Betsy demanded. It's cold in here, Miss Betsy. Kristen complains. This is a family condo. And the weather room, I say, goes. What happened next with the family? <clears throat> Phew. Kyle scooped up his kids. Head to the car. And Andrew started crying when Kristen left. I got mad at everybody. And decided to hunker down at the law library. 2 p.m. Jim has the limo. Dropped him off at the at the uh, liquor store, where he got himself some beer, some uh, snake whiskey, and some blueberry wine. Four p.m. Jim and Betsy's uh, flew back to Washington D.C. in silence, boarding the plane. Jim had uh, slammed Betsy for showing uh, preference for Kyle. The flight got uh, Got better when Betsy gave him a kiss and and he likewise. 6 p.m. Central. JR is in a special room at the law library trying to study when his cell phone rings. It's his mother. Please go apologize to Kristen, Betsy said. 
Leave me alone, Mama. You and Kyle started this whole mess this weekend. I think finally Daddy has a point. 9 p.m. Jared's leaving the law, law library when Betsy calls him again. Stop by Kristen's apartment and apologize. She's been calling me all evening. So it's and and there's like All right, fine. Look, damn it. I'll go talk to her. But don't expect me to apologize for the family. Screwing up again, Jar said. 9.30 p.m. In Kristen's condo, Jar and Kristen hold each other. I'm sorry, Kettles. But it was getting cold in there. And your mother was being insensitive, Kristen said. Other than Daddy? I wish they hadn't come. All weekend, Mama was bragging. It's all, it's all Kyle this and Kyle that. They won't be around here for a while. Daddy's got to finish uh, his uh, term in D.C., up in D.C. Okay, so now we go to September 3rd, 7 a.m. Central. Since Kristen decides to have breakfast with her producers at the studio. J.R. goes and has cinnamon rolls at the Holy Spirit Club. And I see you to grace our table, Connie said. What's wrong? Travel in paradise? Kristen and Mama, they we're arguing about the air con that air conditioner of the condo. And they got into a fight. I hate to brush your bubble, JR. Oh. I hate to brush your bubble, JR. But one of your friends saw her. Going by Brent's duplex to hold his hand, Con said. Oh, now, please. Oh, now, please don't, Stoney says. Gossip offends the spirit. JR, you really need to bring her to the club for a Thursday night devotional. Be that as it may, I helped Brent get a job as a junior columnist for the love of Be that as it may, I helped Brent get a job as a junior columnist for the Lubbock branch of the Fort Worth Times, Connie said. That helps me. The Titan Ball. Is in a month, and I'd like for us to all celebrate uh, Brent's uh, comeback there, Jared said. 9.30 a.m. Central. In legal practice class, Professor Friedrich McKay 
begins the discussion. Today we discuss the genesis and process of Irving Chamber of Commerce versus Leon. This was a case that began in late October 1964, but decided September 30th, 1973. Mr. Chatham, tell me who filed the first complaint. The first complaint was filed by Frank and Marie Hook who had a third stake in a large uh, bank conglomerate in Irving, Tech in Irving, Texas. And the Irving Chamber of Commerce filed a motion for summary judgment saying that Once a three way uh, partnership was dissolved, any of all uh, permits for the bank must cease. Mrs. Kamey. Please tell me what the Circuit Court of Appeals decided March 30th, 1970. Appeals Court vacated the summary judgment and brought the case for the back for trial where the Dallas County judge refused to hear the case and it was brought before the Texas Supreme Court on June 30th, 1973. Mr. Chatham, what do you think it was that delayed the process? Sir, Mr. Chatham said, twice in 1967, when the courts wanted to decide this case, defense requested a continuance. Mrs. Canberry, if you were the judge, knowing what you know about the Supreme Court ruling in favor a Marie Hook, the widow, what would you have done about the uh, continuance? How would straightforward denied the motion for continuance and kept the process going? 11 a.m. Eastern. Public Affairs Officer Blackjack Gonzalez walked into the Department of Commerce and takes the elevator directly to the office of Secretary Mickey Cantor. You say you read Hendricks' letter of resignation, Gonzalez said. Uh, cautiously. Yeah, I read it. What difference does it make? Cantor said, taking out a book. Do you think that you can just skirt past this? Gonzalez asked angrily. 
Hendrick is going to be on the Andrew House show tomorrow. Blasting the president. He wants to quit. I demand you let him quit. I can't do anything without the say so of the president, uh, President Clinton. Fine. Gonzalez laughed aloud. My next stop. The next few days. The Wows. 1 p.m. Central. In tort class, Jr. is mesmerized at the discussion. Pro Professor Sam Barnett begins. The discussion is privacy torts. 3 p.m. Central. At Midway Prep, Christine is in calculus class. And she's still trying to calculate the, the um, a way around the cuts in production for Hendrick Foods. 7 p.m. Eastern. Jim is speaking at a Republican audience in Chesapeake, Virginia. At Dominion Christian University. For the past few hours, Jim had been very angry at Claude because Claude had refused to take his phone calls. He agreed with Betsy that perhaps when he comes back in October, that dissolving that partnership might be the best thing. 7 p.m. Um, Central. J.R. and Kristen are at an Amistar meeting where Elias Grace called up Larry Spalding um, to the stage. I am pleased to announce our new investor as of Friday. J.R. Hendrick. He's been interested in the business since June. He'll be downline to myself, Kristen, and uh, Kelly Rabo. The crowd breaks out in thunderous applause. As Elias Grace beckons J.R. to the stage. To J.R. Hendrick, he shouts. 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Mickey Cantor is escorted to the White House third floor to a... Center hallway of two Secret Service agents and brought into an empty room. Please sit, an agent said. You are asked your reasons for such a late night audience with the president, the Secret Service director said. It's about one of his rogue appointees, James Ryan Hendrick. Ah, oh, ham, President Clinton says, entering the room. Well, let's make this quick. I got to. He said he comes out with two glasses of champagne. Let's just make this quick. I got to got to catch a flight. One of my employees came in demanding that we fire James Ryan Hendrick, saying he wants to resign. Cantor said, 
breaking from his glass. Certainly, I've gotten the message, and I understand what's going on. But there is only one place I'll need Hendrick. I'll need Hendrick. The Oval Office, President Clinton said. He wants to go back to his beloved Texas. Well, I say this. When the time is right, send this podunk packing. He'll call his family crying and saying that he's done, that I destroyed his life. Now, if you don't mind, I got to catch a flight. 11 p.m. Central. Jared's about to go to bed in his condo when he gets a, call, a, a phone call from his Uncle Carl. Hey, I hear that you got some business investments that you're um, getting into. I want to offer my help. Daddy says for me to handle most of it on my own, Gerald said. Your daddy. Your daddy? Carl said. All he cares about is chasing power and arguing with your mama. Okay, this is the fourth, 8 a.m. Central, in the Eastern, rather. At the EAA, Jim is getting ready for his uh, legislative design meeting. This afternoon, I gets a phone call from Senator Cordell, from Senator Cordell Wheeler. Hendrick, I saw the enacting clause yesterday of a piece of legislation you want passed, supportability for small business. Wheeler said. Well, I don't think you're going to get enough Republicans to pass it. And I'm going to join the Democrats in shooting it down. Hope you can handle your own damn wheelchair. Because you're sure going to need it. Jim, Jim said angrily, slamming down the phone. 9 a.m. Central. Mike Fields meets JR outside of Lanier Hall. I don't like your mother's behavior, Mike Field said. But why she keeps hovering over Kyle and treating you like crap would make your granddad pretty damn ashamed. I'm betting I'm betting that daddy was pretty pissed, Gerald said. Your, your father started this years ago, chasing fame in Nashville, and now chasing power in Washington, D.C. Please understand... Mike, I love Kristen. That's why I gave him Hendrick Foods. 
Karen said. It means I don't think Christine knows what she's doing. But if you want Kristen, you go after her. I'm just asking you to be to be uh, careful. 1 p.m. At the EAA meeting, Jim is providing, presiding over the legislative meeting. Unfortunately, however, SBA Administrator Phil later decides he wants some control over the meeting. 1 p.m. Central. Jadar is in his legal practice lab uh, section comparing a case in civil procedure uh, with a case in legal practice or class. 4 p.m. Central. Jar meets Kristen at her condo. Do you have your devotional tonight? I have to go to the studio to lay down some more tracks, Kristen said. We should have more time together tomorrow after my class classes, Jared said. And I'm sorry about Mama, about, about Monday, Labor Day, with Mama's behavior. It's nothing. My mother is coming Friday evening, Kristen said. It's 8 p.m. Central. At the devotional, Odessa University College Law School professor Harris uh, Harris Chevrolet delivers a powerful talk on the nature of law and family. 9.50 p.m. Jow returns to Christian's condo for them to make out for 30 minutes before he returns back to his own condo. Okay. I gotta find September 5th and 6th. Okay. September 5th, 1 p.m. In torts class, Professor Barnett begins teaching about Property torts. The particular case was INDC versus uh, Eastern Texas Power Coalition. 5 p.m. Eastern. Okay, this is where. Jim and Justin Ryder are sharing a drink in 14 Heritage Gate. So, JR, we need to get a drink. Give me your insights so far. Well, I gotta say, Mama's behavior. What we failed to mention was that Mama mentioned Holly Hawthorne on her way out to the apartment. So, so she mentioned Holly Hawthorne. That's what made Daddy mad. <laughs> Daddy told me he got so mad he said, "You want Holly Hawthorne so bad? Why don't you just go ahead and let let him marry her?" So they got into a big fight. I guess welcome to a big family feud. Indeed.
How are the power people in power? I don't like these guys. Justin Ryder said. Hell of a system. You should have seen the storm yesterday and today at the Bob Cooney trial. Three wing circus trap. Well, at least I got you an ally in the Clinton administration. They can help you quit. I bet you. I, I'm, I sent you nobody by the name of Blackjack Gonzalez. one from Austin. Hillary Clinton says he's terrible. That she can't stand. Jim said if he does what he's told I can walk out gracefully. 9 p.m. J.R. and Kristen, J.R. kisses Kristen good night and walks towards his own condo. Now it's the next day, it's 11 a.m. J.R. walks out of civil procedure class and is um, approached by Brent. Let's have some lunch. I want to interview you about you and your father's view of the battle of the budget, Brent said. Carmen's got the car right here. Why don't you just, you just hop in? We grab Subway and go to my condo. Gerald said. 1 p.m. Eastern. Okay, I think this is the sixth. Let me make sure I know what I'm talking about. Let's go to 2 p.m. Eastern. In his executive suite in Gary, Indiana, Jim is consulting with former Vice President Dan Quayle. Now let's bring that. Let's bring that up. Okay, so after the lunch, it's seen. Sorry. I give this 3.2 sprites. 3.2 sprites. A rogue employee. And seeing President Clinton catch a flight. Jarrah? Yeah. I give this... Uh, 3.1 sprites and a rogue employee and the chance to see the right president on the third floor of the White House. <laughs> and I gotta say this. Go Trump, go. Thank you, Jared. Hope you enjoy listening to the J.R. Henry Texan Gentleman. If you would like what you hear, please subscribe and become a part of the adventure. This is the James Henry Empowerment Network saying until next time, get ready for the rest of the story. It gets a little bit more interesting, a little bumpy from here.